back on the Sports Max Zone. Let's continue talking cricket. Defending champions England were battered in the opening match of the ICC 50 over World Cup played earlier on Thursday at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. The English were inserted to bat and compiled 282 for nine from their 50 overs. Their modest innings was stitched together by Joe Root's 77. In reply, the Black Caps lost Will Young for a first ball duck in the second over. That was, however, the final moment of joy for England. Devon Conway and Rachin Ravindra both slammed centuries on their way to an unbroken 273 run stand. New Zealand securing victory by nine wickets with 82 balls to spare, making this the fastest chase of a 250 plus target in World Cup history. And of course, no West Indies at the World Cup. And with the tournament bowling off earlier on Thursday, it was no doubt a bittersweet experience for West Indian cricket fans. I would say more bitter than sweet. For the first time in history, the West Indies failed to secure a spot at the tournament, having lifted the title back in 75 and 79. Our next guest was at the helm of the regional cricket board when the Caribbean side secured three world titles in 2016, the men's and women's T20 crowns and the men's under-19 title. Hmm. We're going to be talking a lot about West Indies cricket and world cricket with Dave Cameron, former CWI president. Mr. Cameron, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, you've been on a number of times, but I feel it's usually on Zoom. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here with <laughs> us in studio. Um, and no better place than this new space. Yeah, beautiful. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, the World Cup started today. Um, how much did you enjoy day one, if any at all? Well, good afternoon, and, and I think I met um, Mariah. Mariah before. Speechless. speechless, I'm speechless. Yeah. Oh, once? Yeah. No, but I've been in studio um, at the other studio a couple of times. So, yes. yeah. so Lance has had me had the pleasure of me a, a couple of times. Um, <laughs> I've had to defend a, a few, but happy to be here with you. Um, <laughs> Took a lot of plodding and, and um, from your from Mikhail, but I, I'm here. Um, so yeah, I, I, I didn't watch all the game today, but okay. interesting to see uh, what happened. I was disappointed with the turnout. Oh dear, I'm so the glad you. The first went game of a World Cup match, and and there are a number of issues behind that. You know, for example, you know the world believes that wherever there's cricket and it's in India, with, irrespective of who is playing, everybody's going to turn up. Um, and that is not the case, as you can see from today. The ticket prices, the ticket venues came out very, very late. Um, those are some of the things that contribute to, to the game today. But very refreshing to see New Zealand. Um, and I, I always view New Zealand as like the Caribbean. And my view is that if New Zealand can do what they do consistently, mm -hmm. similar size, population, then we just need to adopt some more of what New Zealand does from a performance management perspective, and we could emulate New Zealand. And, and you see them right across other sports, you know, rugby, netball, they're top teams as well. Yeah, I'm so happy that you started with the turnout today because it was the first thing that struck me. I was rather disappointed. Um, I know it wasn't India, but, it, but it's the opening game of the World Cup, and so I expected a lot more support. I, I, but Ricardo, even yeah. with that, yes. The, I've never seen a tournament where the host doesn't open. Yes, yeah. that was that also was surprising. Again, what's the rationale behind that? Mm -hmm. You know, setting the tone yes. with the your host. Yeah. That's one of the reasons you host. You set the tone, yeah. you're going to have the best crowd. You can imagine what it would have been in a 100,000-seater stadium with India versus England today. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to get your thoughts. I don't know how much you, you follow these things, but I want to get your thoughts because I've always had issues with the format of 50 over World Cups. One, I generally feel that they are too long. This one will be six weeks. You have 10 teams. You play each other in the opening round. And it's almost as if in a tournament format, you're giving everybody chance after chance to remain in the tournament. Um, I personally like a 16-team tournament. After the first round, half of those go home. Whether you want to go um, two groups of four or you want to do it knockout style, but there is something about a tournament that I think should have that edge about teams um, losing and being out and you're, you're moving on. 
And for me, this 50-over World Cup is just too long. I don't, I don't know what you think about do, it. Do you want the emotional response or do you want the commercial response? We can take I both. I want both. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take both. So, yeah, so from an emotional standpoint, I agree with you. The commercial reality is that India needs to play maximum games for it to be as successful commercially. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's as many games. Because how do you get in there playing maximum games, ensuring? Remember what happened in 2007? In the West in Indies. In the West Indies. They right. got knocked out right. early, and that was that. Yeah. And so irrespective of where the tournament is playing, um, you want India to be playing as many matches as possible. What does that say about our game, though, that we are so dependent on one nation for television and revenue and so on. Correct, and that is the, the challenge that we face. And those are the things I was trying to push against when I was at the ICC. Because mm -hmm. the truth is, look at what FIFA did yesterday. World Cup on three continents, 48 team tournament, um, and the game is growing globally. Whereas we're still left with 10 teams in a, in a World Cup environment. And if India and England and Australia is not there, then there's no value to, to what we're doing. So those are the issues. And, and ICC, um, and unfortunately, my successors are not too concerned about it. Um, and it will continue to, to be that way. So the issue is, uh, and just to go back to the, the venues and the timing, the, the ICC leaves these decisions to the BCCI. It will not happen in the West Indies. I bet you that the venues will be decided on very early. Ticket prices will be set. Where the matches are going to be hosted will be set early. But the BCCI has carte blanche to determine where the matches are going to play because they also get all the revenues yeah. from the games that are hosted there. One quick one. Should we also expect for the T20 World Cup next year that majority of the matches will be played in the mornings to satisfy the Indian population. You are correct. And mm. would you say that it hurts cricket on the whole? Well, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want to say it, it hurts, but obviously for us viewing in the region um, and wanting to attend the game, it is a struggle. How many of us are going to go to a 9 o'clock game, um, and especially on a weekday? Yeah. Um, just not going to happen. But that's the commercial side of the game. And as we grow, everybody wants to be paid. And so we have to match commercial with the, the game itself um, and the growth of the game. So the, the, the other way to do that is to grow it in markets that is on our time zone, the United States, Canada, um, and in South and Central America. And Dave, something that has been disturbing the entire Caribbean, we spoke about it on the show yesterday, no West Indies on this biggest stage Talk to me about that as a former president of CWI. How do you feel about this? Um, well, I think I made my views public um, when we didn't qualify. So I think if you go and check my t Twitter timeline, there's, there's some views there. But can you tell us I'm now? very, very disappointed. But the die was cast, Mariah. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, Ricardo was on the, on the show, but four years ago, we beat England in a series in the Caribbean, 2019. Test cricket and ODIs. Um, I lost the elections in March, and we totally threw out all the gains that we had made. We picked a team, we selected a team and coach to go to the 2019 World Cup, and we came ninth. That's the reason we're not here today. Mm -hmm. It has nothing else, to do, all the other things in between, because if we had played well in that tournament, we would have qualified automatically for this tournament. So everything else is, is corollary to, to what happened in 2019. You know, there are some detractors, Dave, who would say, but when you were president, West Indies had to go through a qualifying tournament. And, yeah. and, and some would say we, we barely got through that qualifying yeah. tournament. Uh, and absolutely. And so my administration took all the blows in a very difficult period. We, were, we had to res reshape rejig rejiggle the, the, the employment contracts, the employment conditions. And so we got through that. A lot of the players decided that they were not playing. They, they walked out and West Indies cricket. Mm -hmm. So that is part of a difficult period in which we started to rebuild. And we, we had players. And I, I say to you, just think about in 2019 when the West Indies 
beat England in the Test Series. We had four players, four batters that were in the top 20 in the world. And we had four bowlers in the top 20 in the world. You're a statistician. You can go and check it. Uh, <laughs> I hear um, to go and check it. Cricket is a team sport. Yeah. One person can't win. And as you, you just demonstrated and spoke about Haley. <laughs> There's no way we're going to be a force to be reckoned with with one, one team. It has to be a system. Um, and when I became president in 2013, I remember Simon Croskill asking me how long I wanted to be president. And I said to him, if it was possible that once I moved on, we continued the systems in place, then I would have, it, you know, it, it would have, I would have been happy going in a year or a month. My disappointment is that we showed everything that we had put in place and worked for, the performance system. And that's the reason why we're where we are today. Tell me, in 10 years, 11 years of CPL cricket, tell me the new players that have come through in the 11 years in our domestic tournament. We have players who are stars in the CPL who can't, who have retired from the IPL. That tells you about the standard and what we're offering in the Caribbean. So I don't want to, you know, but the, the, the information is there. Just go and look at it. If you are, if you played 150 games and you're averaging 25, it means that you're a 25 batter. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you ain't gonna get any better mm. unless you change something. If you're 19 and you've played five games and you're averaging 19, 25, then I believe you can get better. Yeah. yeah, your narrative just now, uh, Dave, just um, presented a, a picture that during your years of presidency between 2013 and 2019, you were building something that crashed after you left. But the statistics show that um, the cricket had declined while you were there as well. Because if you look at the world ratings, which every cricket West Indies um, president incoming points to that they want to move the, the West Indies rankings forward. We have um, some statistics showing that when you became president back in 2013, mm -hmm. the West Indies ranked seventh in test cricket, seventh in ODI and eighth in T20. When you left in 2019, they were down to eighth, down to ninth, down to eighth in test, down to ninth in ODIs and one place up in the T20s. So, um, your departure saw the West Indies based on its ranking in world cricket in a worse position than when you came in in 2013. So I'm not sure if the picture you're painting that you were building something and then it went crashing when you left is, is yeah, accurate. And, and I remember Lance, viewers, it, it's a cumulative uh, performance ranking. It's not, you know, it's not as of today. Yeah. The 2013 ranking would have been a culmination of everything that happened before that. It's a two-year, three-year sliding scale. Right. Um, and in the same way, the rankings um, in 2019. But remember again, Lance, I went through a very difficult period where the players walked out on West Indies cricket in 2014. Like, we forget. Yeah, but your detractors would say that... That was the, the reason. The, there, there, there was a toxic atmosphere in West Indies cricket and relationship with the players triggered by your style of leadership, right. which, which triggered that. So how would you respond to that? My response to that, it was not about the leadership. The, 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 the players used that as an excuse to play, to, to, to explore their T20 skills all around the world. Mm. Um, as a matter of fact, if you think about it, in 2016, when we won that World Cup, the beneficiary of that World Cup was all the players and management. Every player after, at, after that time got contracts all around the world and in mm -hmm. IPL to play. West Indies cricket didn't actually make any more money. Um, and again, going back to the, the issue with how world cricket is, 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 is set up. You win all the championships and offer in 2013, but yet still commercially, West Indies cricket was, was worse off because now, all the players found a reason why they didn't want to play for West Indies. Because the relationship with the president and whatever the case is, whatever. Well, it went just remember, just remember this. Whatever you want to view my relationship with the players as, tell me at what point and any time have I made any disparaging comments against our players, except for the Twitter that I retweeted and responded. And, um, you mean Gail, Chris Gail? Chris Gail. 
where where have I made any? Well, disparity? Darren Bravo had an issue with your misrepresentation of the the contract that he had, All which right. caused the problem as well. And that was done actually on Sportsmax. Mm, yes. Well, I was asked a question, and I said the contract was downgraded. Whether it was from A to B or B to C, okay. that's irrelevant. It was downgraded. My bad. Mm. I, I, and should I have known that? Maybe not. I'm not in the room um, doing these things. Yes. So I, I misrepresented it, and I, and I apologize for that. But I have never, ever gone on air, and none of the players, none, can say that I've ever had a hard word with them. Yeah. yeah. But the other thing, though... So, so, so all I'm saying to you, Lance, yes. and you've bought into it, I, and all of you have bought... The entire Caribbean, because... The entire listen, Caribbean? The, yeah, yeah, man, because the emotion... No, because we're emotional. Okay. The, the, the thing about it is that I'm never going to go up against my players. They, 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 they are who like everybody... They, they are who everybody comes to look, look at. Yeah. But I'm in a very difficult position. As a cricket board, as a governing body... We see players, we have future players, mm -hmm. we have current players, and we have past players. Mm -hmm. Our job is a very difficult one in that our players today want to get all the resources that comes in because their, 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 their span, their lifespan as a sportsman is very short, etc. They forget that we had to fund 15, 17, 19 for them to come through. We have to ensure that that continues. Yeah. Yep. But Dave, before, yeah. you, before you so, continue on that line, yeah. though, because we spoke about the players and your relationship with the players, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just the players. There were stakeholders in West Indies cricket that, at the end of your tenure, were, were, were happy to see you go because there was a bad relationship between yourself and, no, and man, these individuals. No, not bad it, relationship. I, I don't call it that. What was it? We had a disagreement on, on, on the way forward. So, for example, um, prime ministers. Yes. Yeah, prime ministers. I, I, I remember having a meeting you mean with Rowley Mitchell and Gonzales. Yeah, we had a meeting with the prime ministers. Two of them, um, um, Gons, um, Mitch, Mitchell. Rowley was not prime minister at the time. Yeah. I had a, with, with prime minister Gonzales and Mitchell, Keith in, Mitchell in Trinidad. Grenada. Yeah. In Trinidad, mm -hmm. and I outlined to them a sustainable program that I'd put in place, mm -hmm. and what I was trying to build. And the response, the first response was, I'm not here to, for a lecture. Oh. And I, my response was, well, I'm just trying to say to you that what we're doing, it's not something I just pick out of a hat and say, you know, whatever. So, and I've actually sent it to CARICOM because one of the, 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 when I became president, I visited all of them and I said, listen, I need your support. It's going to be tough, the, the changes. I want to be able to even come to CARICOM and report to you on what we're doing and for you to ask me the hard questions. I couldn't get a chance to go to CARICOM. I was never invited. Um, are they always very busy? So I sent the document, our strategic plan and what we're doing into CARICOM. If they didn't get it, that's not my challenge. And I communicated directly with Neville Bissembo, who was the advisor to the, to the chairman of CARICOM. But, but the point is, we try to explain to them that it's not, uh, it just has to be sustainable. Explain to them we had a massive shortfall in our finances. And there's no way we're going to get funding if we're not performing. And so the route to starting to get to that point results. Was, was results. And starting to, to create a system that we could produce players, one player, one star in a West Indies team. And that's what we've been, we've been, we've been looking at. You know, you all mentioned Brian Lara. He does one star for 10 years, then Chris Gale. And then, you know, you, when, we were, when we started, and this is what I'm saying to you, system, go back again and look at 2019. The rankings um, and, and, and statistics, we can put it anywhere we want to get the results we want. But just look back at 2019. When we won that, world, that series against England, look at the quality of the players, the ranking, the world rankings. Forget about what the, the averages were in the Caribbean because the world rankings will tell you where they're at at that particular time in where they're going. We had the number one all around in, in, in the Caribbean leading the team. We had Kimar Roach. We had uh, from the fast bowler from... from um, you had Shannon Gabriel, Shannon Alzar Gabriel Joseph. and Alzar Joseph. Yeah. All in that team. Yes. And we had... 
Rustin Chase batting. We had the wicket keeper from Barbados. I don't know what has happened to Shane Dorich. Dorich. Shane Dorich. Dorich and all these guys. And, and, and Craig Braffitt. Yeah. So all I'm saying to you is, it, you, we could all we could talk about this from from now uh, now to die kingdom. Are Come. you suggesting those players have regressed since 2019? Well, I'm I'm not suggesting. The numbers are there. Don't, don't, again, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. If you ask me, I, I don't see them. They were in the top 20, top 30 in the world in 2019. Well, well Roach is getting older, so you know his is decline is is understandable. Is, is but Dorch's um, disappearance. Really is, is of concern, and, and Holder's uh, not being as consistent as he, he would have been three or four years ago would have been a concern as well. Yeah. I, I, I want to get this one in, in Dave. Um, if you had the opportunity mm -hmm. to do it again, mm -hmm. would you change anything about how you govern? Yeah, um, you know, that's a tough one because, Ricardo, the, the, the issue is it was never about how I governed. It was how it was received. Um, what do I mean by that? Would I uh, have... Am I happy we had a strike in India? Absolutely not. We, we tried everything to avert it. Mm -hmm. But all the presidents prior to me had two and three strikes. Okay. And, and the thing got succeedingly worse. All, as I mean, as, as a matter of fact, Wes Hall, who was closest to the players, I think had two strikes. Um, and he, with, was, he was very disappointed. <laughs> and I he had was, several conversations and he was, with him. And yeah. he was bitterly disappointed that the players went on strike. So I think it's how it was received. My biggest mistake in my mind was I assumed, we assumed that having had the conversations with the Players Association, that it would have been received in the same way we, 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 we other players associations before that yeah. um, was able to communicate and the players got, had a buy-in. Mm -hmm. So the misstep was that we did not sit down with the players and explain to them in as clear a detail what the changes in remuneration um, would mean, because that was the biggest issue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, excuse me if you've answered this question before, because I know with these issues, and especially in your position, mm -hmm. sometimes you can feel like you're answering the same question yeah, no over problem. and over no again. Problem. But I remember when the strike happened in India, one mm -hmm. of the criticism is that you as president took too long to get to India to have direct conversations with the cricketers. Yeah, Wait, well, and, and so let me. I didn't. I, no, and you I wasn't planning. And I wasn't planning to go there either. Yeah. Yeah. But we, I, we had, we had. Um, the first time I got wind that there was trouble, I immediately asked for a, a, a Skype call with the players, which they agreed to through Wavell. And on the day of the Skype call, I was told that they don't want to speak to me anymore. They're gonna instruct Wavell what needs to happen and. If we didn't agree to terms, then the, the, the actual quotation in the letter was that if we didn't agree, then they would bring Western cricket to its knees. Do you feel that miscommunication was a major part of what happened? Because I have, yeah, absolutely. I've had absolutely. conversations with absolutely. the players as well, yeah. of course, off the record. Mm -hmm. And many of them felt as if they could not speak to you, as if you were not <laughs> responding to their calls and messages in the way that they would well, have liked. Well, 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 Mariah, let me let me tell you. Let me let me just let me let me let me just tell you this. I made myself available. There's no player in the West Indies that didn't have my phone number or my email address. Uh, I, we went initially when we took over in 2013. We took the players. To, to Florida on a farm trip, which we were heavily criticized for as well because they were going off to a tour in India and we didn't do very well in India. And I remember Tony Cozy said, I have the guys in gallivanting all over the place and we were supposed to be getting ready to go to India. We got beaten. I, we, I, we went, I played football with them. I bowled to them. I played basketball. We went to, to, to the sea, sea Aquarium. And I rode on the bus with them from Orlando to, to Florida just to show that I'm not above and beyond. All of them, I sat with the three captains at the time, Bravo, Pollard, and Sammy, in the hotel in Trinidad. And I said to them, gentlemen, this is the kind of approach I'd like to get. What year, what year was this? 2013. 
2013. 2013. We, when we took office in March, um, we went to Florida in summer. Um, I didn't make the trip to because I had another meeting, and so the players ended up going to the NBA game, the Miami Heat. Um, Carol was, was a major part of that. So for them to say that, yeah. um, Mr. Bravo on his way, the last communication I had um, with Mr. Bravo on his way to Trinidad was um, to India was questioning the selection of the team, persons in the, in the team. Mm. That was the last communication. For, for him to say that he can't reach me or that I was in any no, way. No, it's not him. Nobody called um, names. I no, just for anybody to say that I was unavailable yes. and I could not be reached is not so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are we going to see you pop up? in administration anywhere, anytime soon, sports administration, yeah, maybe yeah, another sport. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, man, I'm, as you'd know, Ricardo, I I'm... I know, I'm just asking. I'm, yeah, man, you, the news is out. What are you I'm, thinking? Um, football. Yeah? Football, football in Jamaica. Um, you know, hopefully I can, I can assist Raymond Anderson, who is running as the, the next president of the JFF, to bring some of the performance um, metrics to, to the sport. The biggest challenge I had in West Indies cricket is that we got very um, insular, if you want to call it. So the issues I have was more about, you know, if, if this player didn't play, it's because I didn't like Trinis or didn't like Bayesians. As a matter of fact, when I became president in 2013, there was an article that came out in the Barbados Today that said the reason why all only trainers were playing because I didn't like Bayesians and I shut down the academy mm. in Barbados. And by the time of my tenure, I didn't like trainers and I was just now picking <laughs> um, Bayesians. What's your problem? So, so what's my problem? And, I, and, and Jamaicans voted me out. Oh. <laughs> so, I, have a tough so. question. I, have, I have a tough question for you, though, Dave. I have a tough football question for you. Sure, tell me. Um, you are supporting Raymond Anderson to unseat Michael Ricketts That's as correct. president of the Jamaica Football Federation. That's correct. Um, does Dave Cameron and Raymond Anderson agree with the sacking of Lon Donaldson, the coach of the women's team? Well, first thing, Lon Donaldson wasn't sacked. The non-renewal of his contract. Non-renewal of his contract. Yeah, and the way it was done, is, is Mr. Well, Anderson happy with it? Well, we could, we, could, we could always go around and try and figure out um, what's the best way to do it. I don't, I don't have a handle on what the process is within the, the, the JFF. If you're asking me how I would have done it, um, I would have simply sent Lorne a letter outlining the reasons for his non-renewal. I wouldn't even have a meeting with him. Because it, at the end of the contract, and let's be fair, again, it depends on how you want to be, but you could have easily sent him a letter to say that we're not renewing the contract. But inviting him to a meeting to say we're not renewing... Yeah, but why, would you, why would you not renew a contract of a coach that has been immensely successful? Well, again, w I don't know. W what were the terms of his engagement? Okay. That, that's the point I'm making. So until you understand the terms of his engagement, is yeah. it that we're at this juncture, remember now, Resources, additional resources would have come in for the campaign. Um, and I heard Speed on a program saying that they could not afford... Rudolf Speed. Um, right. Um, carrying him forward. Yeah, you call so his name I'm very saying, loosely. You call his name very loosely, though. Yeah, he's my friend. <laughs> we're, we're, he's your friend? We're, yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're out right, of time. Um, quickly, what role are you... Are you, are you... I, I'm, I, right now, I chair um, Raymond's campaign... Um, to, to, to become okay. the next president. So you're loosely the campaign manager? No, the chairman of the campaign team. Okay. okay. So you won't be on the executive if he wins? I will leave that to Raymond. I'm, I'm in his cabinet. <laughs> Got it. All right. <laughs> Right, you so want to wrap it? Yeah, the, the one and only, Dave Cameron. It's been a pleasure. Our producer has Thank been you. wrapping us for the last 10 minutes. But we we got to go. get in some of that. Day one of the Cricket World Cup, if that was day one. I tell you what, day one on this show yeah. was better than day one in Ahmedabad today. Absolutely. Let's go to a break. We'll go back. <laughs>